हेलो फ्रेंड्स आज की वीडियो है जॉन ड्राइडन की कविता मैक फ्लैक्नो पर तो ये जो आंसर है इसमें इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट है सैडवेल कैरेक्टर है मॉक हीरोइक इसे क्यों कहा गया है अल्यूजन और सटायर इन सब का आंसर बस आपको एक ही आंसर में मिलेगा तो शुरू करते हैं Mac Flecknoe was published in 1682 but was written in 1678 itself it was published anonymously thus giving rise to the theory that Oldham and not Dryden was its author but in 1692 Dryden acknowledged its authorship even if he had not the style of the work and its peculiar satirical bent make it clear that dryden alone could have written it oldham did not possess the genius to have written this mock heroic poem mac flecknoe is a highly entertaining satire on thomas sadwell the historical background to mac flecknoe goes back to the publication of absalom and achitophel in which dryden had attacked saftsbury as an enemy and traitor to the nation saftsbury though arrested and sent to the tower was later acquitted of treasonous charges and his supporters struck a medal in his honor dryden now wrote the satire the medal against saftsbury it provoked a reply the medal of john bays by thomas sadwell dryden was not a man to meekly accept the insult and he published mac flecknoe as a retaliation dryden and sadwell had once been on friendly terms though they had argued with each other on literary matters it is not clear how personal animosity set in between them leading to literary attacks on one another whatever the circumstances are dryden's resort to sadwell is witty and comical it is not only a satire on sadwell but also ridicules all literary dances to dosto yahan pe iska introduction part khatam hota hai अब यहाँ से शुरू होता है रिचर्ड फ्लेक्नो का कैरेक्टर जो कि आप इंट्रोडक्शन के बाद कंटिन्यू कर सकते हैं रिचर्ड फ्लेक्नो 1600 हंड्रेड टू सिक्सटीन सेवेंटी एट वॉज एन इंग्लिश ड्रामेटिस्ट एंड पोइट हिज वर्क वॉज रिडिक्यूल्ड बाई ड्राइडन एज वेल एज पोइट एंड ड्रू मार्वल सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी वन टू सिक्सटीन सेवेंटी एट इन मैक फ्लेक्नो ही इज़ द कास्ट इन द फिक्सनल रोल ऑफ द किंग ऑफ नॉनसेंस He is getting older and decides he must appoint a successor in one of his sons. He chooses Sadwell because he is most like him. He is dull and devoid of wit and sense. Dryden calls him the dullest son of Flecknoe. Sadwell alone of all my sons is he who stands confirmed in full stupidity. The rest to some faint meaning make pretense. but sadwell never deviates into sense some beams of wit on others other souls may fall strike through and make a lucid interval but sadwell's genuine knight admits no rays his rising fogs prevail upon the day sadwell was a born enemy of wit sense and intelligence to add to it he took an oath at the coronation ceremony so sadwell swore nor should his vow be vain that he till death true dullness would maintain and in his father's right and realm's defense never to have peace with wit nor truth to dosto richard flecknoe jo hai wo sadwell ke pita hote hain is poem mein to aisa hota hai ki ab richard flecknoe boodhe ho rahe hain to ab उनको अपनी गद्दी पर किसी और को बिठाना है तो उसके लिए वो जो उस लायक है उस गद्दी के लायक है वो उनको अपने बहुत सारे बच्चों में से चुनना होता है तो सैडविल जो है वो एक ऐसे व्यक्ति हैं जो 
जो कि जन्म लिए हैं विदाउट विट सेंस और इंटेलिजेंस के तो इसीलिए ड्राइडिन को लगता है कि उनके सभी बच्चों में से सैडविल ही उस लायक है कि वो उस गद्दी पर बैठे तो बेसिकली ये एक सटायर है जो कि ड्राइडन ने लिखा है सैडविल पे और ये 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 उनके जो उनके बीच जो पर्सनल दुश्मनी हुई थी उसी उसी वजह से उन्होंने ये कविता लिखा है उनको मॉक करने के लिए अब यहाँ से ये पार्ट है जो पढ़ के आपको पता चल जाएगा ये ये सटायर और मॉक हीरोइ क्यों हैं All these lines fully illustrate that Mac Flecknoe is a personal satire. Sadville is a dullard, a slow writer, fat in body and hollow in intellect, and above all, a plagiarist. He is a man who has to make no effort to be dull. Dullness was absolutely natural to him. He is attacked for his clumsy composition and bombastic language. Dryden ignores the plus points of his rival for instance his keen insight into human nature and his acquaintance with the foibles of individuals all this indicates that mac flecknoe was certainly motivated by personal enmity the satire is certainly a personal attack there is indeed a poetic impulse behind mac flecknoe it shows the remarkable ability to transform the ridiculous into poetry the mock heroic technique is very well used brilliant imagery too is to be found in the poem especially in the comparison of sadwell to the monarch ox and to arian and to hannibal it is a comic genius of great ability that is at work in mac flecno Sadwell himself is a supreme comic creation though it would be an exaggeration to class him with Shakespeare's Falstaff the imaginative structure of the poem with the fantasy of a coronation at the center is at once pleasing and effective for satiric purposes allegory is a mode of writing which is a symbolic narrative or a figurative treatment of one subject under the guise of another the allegory in mac flecknoe has a satirical intention indeed the satire is the dominant factor the poem uses allegory as an effective means to achieve the satirical goal the satire is not only personal though most of it is motivated by personal grievances and rivalry तो दोस्तों अगर आप ऐसे डेफिनेशन लिखेंगे तो ये आपका मार्क्स बढ़ाने में हेल्प करेगा इट इज़ आल्सो डिरेक्टेड टुवर्ड्स पोए टेस्टर्स डालनेस एंड स्टूपिडिटी इन जनरल द अटैक ऑन सैडवेल प्रोजेक्ट्स लार्जर इश्यूज जस्ट एज यूनिवर्सल ट्रूथ्स आर मेड टू अप्लाई पर्सनली टू रिचर्ड फ्लैक्नोज रिप्रेजेंटेशन प्लस सेटअप तो आप इसके बाद ही इस आंसर को कंटिन्यू कर सकते हैं द ओपन द पोएम ओपन्स विद अ फिक्टीसियस सेटअप मैक फ्लैक्नो मीन्स द सन ऑफ फ्लैक्नो रिचर्ड फ्लैक्नो सैडवेल्स लिटरेरी फादर इन द पोएम is the aged monarch of dalnes was in real life a catholic priest and a versifier andrew marvel had satirized him playfully in flecno an english priest in rome the wits of the day generally regarded flecno as an object of ridicule by the time dryden chose him to be the father of the prince of dalnes he had come to symbolize the would be poet of poor ability but in context of mac flecknoe the father's talents in dullness though great are not to be unique the son is greater in the field of dullness than the father flecknoe accordingly is only the prophet precursor of the true epitome of uni- unrelieved ignorance and stupidity mac flecknoe his son
Richard Flecknoe is contemplating on whom to choose from among his numerous progeny as a fit successor to his throne and realm of nonsense. The situation embodies every aspect which Dryden could desire to exploit in his satire of Sadwell. Who better could be found for the throne of nonsense than Sadwell, who never deviates into sense? At the same time, the fictitious setup enables Dryden to attack the low literary qualities of the day. Flecknoe's speech on his decision to choose Sadwell as his successor is fraught with ironical barbs. He is made to dwell on the supposed merits of his son, his superiority in dullness and stupidity, his pretensions to music and verse, his supreme incapacity to be intelligent. Flecknoe triumphantly deca- declares, Sad will alone my perfect image bears. Mature in dullness from his tender years, sad will alone of all my sons is he who stands confirmed in full stupidity. Conclusion of Richard Flecknoe तो यहाँ से शुरुआत होती है Richard Flecknoe के conclusion का The hero of the poem is a fool and dull art. Dryden's treatment makes sad will give vitality of the principles of folly enunciated by aged monarch at the same time that he received the meaning by exemplifying the essence of natural stupidity. He is depicted as the dying monarch of nonsense, bequeathing his title to the playwright Thomas Sadwell. The attack is unex- unexpected since Flecknoe had written an epigram in Dryden's praise and both were Catholics. Robert Saudi giving it as his opinion that Flecknoe is no means, by no means the despicable writer that we might suppose from Dryden's vicious attack, accounted for it by supposing that Dryden was offended at his invectives against the obscenity of this stage, feeling himself more notorious, if not more culpable, than any. Any of his rivals. Richard Flecknoe is the first satirical portrait painted in detail next to Sadwell's. Dryden entertained no personal enmity towards Flecknoe, but he is made the father of the Prince of Dullness because Flecknoe had become a general symbol of bad versifiers and an object of ridicule. He thus represents all incomplete poets. Flecknoe's name is now so obscure that we speak of him only as a character in Dryden's poem. He was indeed a poet of less than mediocre talent, one of those poets who purchase fame by writing ill and achieve the low sublime. The portraiture of Flecknoe as the monarch of dullness and nonsense is therefore apt and justified, but Flecknoe is the main target of ridicule in Dryden's poem. It is Mac Flecknoe or the son of Flecknoe or is the hero of the poem. Flecknoe has merely been sent to prepare the way for a great prince of dullness. He was sent to teach the nations in thy greater name, that is in Sadwell's name. दोस्तों अब यहाँ से शुरुआत होती है एल्यूजन प्लस सेटिंग ऑफ कोरोनेशन ये सब मैंने इसलिए लिखा है ताकि आप लोगों को समझने में आसानी हो वरना आप ये आंसर इसको कंटिन्यू कर सकते हो मतलब आपको ये लिखने की ज़रूरत नहीं है अगर आप इसको यहाँ ख़त्म करते हो तो इस आंसर को शुरू कर सकते हो यहाँ से और अगर आपको आप आपका एक सेपरेट क्वेश्चन आता है अल्यूजन प्लस सेटिंग ऑफ कोरोनेशन पर तो आप यहाँ से शुरुआत कर सकते हो विद इन द एलिगोरिकल फ्रेमवर्क ड्राइडन अटैक सैडविल्स प्रिटेंशंस टू लिटररी फेम कॉन्स्टेंट रेफरेंसेस आर मेड टू हिज वर्क्स एंड अदर डल एंड वर्थलेस राइटर्स ऑफ द डे इफ वी कॉल सैडविल द प्रॉफिट ऑफ टॉटोलॉजी 
he is ridiculing not he is ridiculing not only sadwell's tendency to write mechanical verse and his dull poetizing but he is attacking the very tendency which dominated the literary scene of the day sadwell is linked with bad writing the connection is made through the allegorical speech of the aged monarch flickno as he abdicates in favor of his more worthy son he is advised to sadwell is leave writing please and choose for thy command some peaceful province in acrostic land there thou mayst wings display an altar raise and torture one poor 10000 ways the place for the coronation is appropriately situated it is a nursery where boys and girls are trained as actors and actresses but the plays which are performed there are not the great dramas of ben jonson and fletcher they are works of those who can wage harmless war with words sadwell as a born scourge of wit and flail of sense will find a ready place there the allegory is maintained in describing the site for coronation it is continued in the description of the coronation itself the regal way is covered not with persian carpets but with the scattered pages torn from worthless books of second rate authors scattered limbs of mingled poets thick fogs envelop the princess's brow with lambent dullness played around his face the nodding nodding poppies overspreading the temples of the monarch to be the omen of 12 owls and the o- anointment the enthronement and the solemn oath never to have peace with wit nor truce with sense all maintain the narrative situation of coronation and at the same time convey the allegorical meaning it points to the external war of dances against good sense and intelligence the sad will and sad will is the supreme example of such a dance ab ye answer hai allusion of owl and other allusions in the poem par according to dryden no ray of enlightenment has struck through the intelligence of sadwell as his genuine knight admits no ray sadwell's dimness even prevents the be- deem- beams of daylight as the poem says his rising fogs prevail upon the day the poem even comments upon his large stature and goodly fabric and compared his thoughtless nature with a dumb oak the poet also portrays the images of sadwell coming up from the thomas themes to accept the rain to satirize the poetic feet and rhyme of sadwell's works dryden sets the rain of sadwell in the brothill district of london augusta which is surrounded by prostitutes the mock heroic style of dryden satire is diminishing sadwell while sardonically connecting him with enormity during his coronation the streets are filled with scattered limbs of mingled poets and their literary works and according to dryden sadwell's reign is the destruction of true poetry sad will reign the throne with the vow of maintaining true dullness and war with wit and sense dryden refers to the legend of 12 owls which symbolizes darkness and stupidity and says that those owls flew from sadwell's left hand and <coughs> it confirms the beginning of his reign it is the sarcastic echo of the romulus's establishment of rome while he saw 12 vultures or crows flecknoe seeks divine blessings for sadwell's advancement in new impudence new ignorance and advised sadwell to maintain his talent so that he will be able to write verses like him 
like mine they gentle numbers feebly creep towards the end of the poem dryden advised sadwell to try a lower form of poetry like acrostics hence dryden's scornful attitude dramatically turned into flecknoe's praise for sadwell dryden use dryden's use of several allusion plays a vital role in the satire but it it is also obscure for modern writers as he used contemporary allusions by bringing phrases about john the baptist dryden narrated the satire in the style of third person omniscient narrators of classical epics like the iliad the aeneid but gradually the poet inserts himself into the <coughs> story as the first person dryden's political satire had public themes but mac flecknow is a personal and parochial satire that articulated a broader view about the importance of having good taste and poetic talent in a nation <coughs> trapdoor imagery the poem sustains the allegory to the end the last action is in the vein of an allegory the old monarch falls through a trapdoor in the midst of his speech bestowing his mantle and double portion of his wit or rather the lack of it on his successor the action gains extra force through the fact that sadwell's own play the word to sow supplies the idea the allegory is unified all through the poem at no place do flecknow and sadwell lose their identity as king and prince and hence successor to the throne respectively within the framework of the coronation of the prince we have devastating satire against sadwell in particular and the deteriorating literary conditions of the day in general as flecknow was making his speech and before it came to an end bruce and longville opened a trap door through which he at once disappeared as he went down the le- he left behind him his cloak or coarse woolen stuff which was wafted upward by a wind from the bowels of the earth the mantle lighted on the sol- soldiers shoulders of the young prophet sadwell who was gifted with twice the measure of <coughs> sorry inspiration possessed by his predecessor that is was destined to exhibit greater stupidity than flecno to dosto ye conclusion hai ye aap sabhi answer mein include kar sakte ho dryden satire against sadwell is supremely annihilating he succeeds in destroying sadwell or rather reducing him to an unevenably small personage and he does it through good humored olympian laughter <coughs> sorry indeed so effective has dryden's efforts been that we remember only the sadwell of mac flecknow and consider that picture to be true epic comparison elevated words and phrases and association of grandeur as used by dryden render sadwell utterly ridiculous dosto ye video bahut lambi ho gayi hai par ये आपके लिए काफ़ी हेल्पफुल रहेगी क्योंकि इसमें मैंने उन सभी आंसर को इंक्लूड करने के लिए कोशिश इंक्लूड करने की कोशिश की है जो इम्पॉर्टेंट है और अगर मुझसे कोई गलती हो गई हो तो प्लीज़ उसके लिए माफ़ कर दीजिएगा थैंक यू और अगर आपको मेरी वीडियो पसंद आई हो हेल्पफुल लगी हो तो प्लीज़ लाइक करें और मेरे चैनल को सब्सक्राइब करें थैंक यू